Welcome to The Uncommon Truth. My name is Max, and I'm joined by Stephen Vicky Orsillo, Senior Pastors of the Father's House Church. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Steve just won uh, $5 million on Facebook. <laughs> so, um, Can I someone say chump? He's gonna. He's gonna. At the end of the show, he'll probably put his uh, his account number in the bottom of the episode. <laughs> yeah. And uh, That's and you right. can wire anything else you want to send him directly I've, to him. I've had five or six people who won large jackpots wow. offer to donate. Wow. And, but all I have to do is send them all my contact information, <laughs> my social security numbers. number to total strangers on the internet. Great. And they usually and we'll be okay. Ethiopia. So we'll we'll save them time. We'll just put it in the podcast That's description. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So anybody, if you want to donate to Steve. Yeah. Um, for Christmas, then we'll we'll put that there. That'd be amazing. Um, yeah, and and Vicky's super excited because it's Christmas time. I right? am excited because it's Christmas time. It's it is. Um, we're out there at the Lights of Hope um, today, and it's been phenomenal being out there. It feels enchanting seeing uh, all the people that have come through the Lights of Hope, which is our little Christmas village for benefit the 985 children for Gift of Hope that we're yeah. giving gifts to. It gets a week. little bit confusing like we've got a we've got a slide that steve built and i'm calling it the slide of hope because it's at the lights of hope which benefits the gift of hope or you hope you stop yeah hope hope you aren't they calling it the toboggan run it's uh technically the home depot hill because home Home depot Depot it is definitely the the home depot hill yeah and And then how about uh, the time that you guys taught me to do in that construction hill (laughs) yeah well vicky vicky went down it and you were there that was pretty cool and you didn't go down it i didn't go down it but i built he said i was there yeah, and you guys you said you're going to catch me. Yeah, what's that got to do with anything? <laughs> we didn't catch but you. But it should be the Steve Orsillo construction. Oh, wow. Well. So, okay, so we've got, about. we've got lots of things going on. This Lights Correct. of Hope. It's because it's been a little while. We took a little break for Thanksgiving, and right. now it's it's uh, Christmas time. And um, so we kind of have to recap. But we've got our little Christmas village and light walk and, uh, and this big toboggan hill and, and all sorts of stuff. People can go out and hang out under the lights it's and fabulous. get a little um, private seating area with a fire pit and marshmallows. It's really cool. We're doing that uh, every every day until right before Christmas. Mm-hmm. We also have Gift of Hope where, um, I don't know, how long ago did that start? It's got to be 14, 15 years, doesn't it, It's Steve? a long time now. Yeah, I th- how about 2005? 2005, our voice fact came, That's all, was, 15 was years. Was Luke actually here when it started? To- I don't you think just so. happen to know that tidbit of information. He, he well, just he's Mister Gift of Hope. Well, he was here a long time ago. That's what happens when we don't. When he's then. not logged into our, our fact checker system, he just has to yell it from. He across feels the like room. he has a liberty to speak when he's not behind the computer. That's all right. We yes. got to get him on the show. Yeah. But 2005. So then that's that's 16 years, I guess. No. 15. 15 years. Sorry. And advanced um, math. Yeah, that's why I do a <laughs> podcast and not math. But we. We've been getting kids yeah. Christmas gifts, um, kids who couldn't, or can't, her parents can't afford it, right? Yeah, I'm wondering how many thousands actually we've done because I know with the, uh, the Paradise, when Paradise Burnt, we did almost 2,000, and I think we've run about 1,000 in the last few weeks, a few years. So yeah. it'd be interesting to see. It's been, it's been a marvelous, marvelous uh, ministry. And, and then we had, a, we had a little team competition of who could get the most kids sponsored, and Vicky won that. She got 84 kids sponsored. Shocked. I did. Uh, I brought out my emotional manipulation. I dressed up my daughters in Christmas dresses and took them to the Joby. Starbucks drive-through. What'd you end up with? Uh, I ended up with thirty-five. Wow! But Jovi gets all the credit for that. So Jovi gets a yeah. twenty-five dollar gift card. Yeah. Her, her cuteness did it. She yes. she de- never said the same thing twice because she couldn't remember. <laughs> Would you like to get Christmas gifts to kids who like Christmas? And just every time they they're like, I just yes. I'll say yes. I don't yes. know what How it do you is say yet, no to that sweetness yeah. right there? Yeah. So that's all the stuff we got going on for yeah, Christmas. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it was, it's been a, a remarkably busy four weeks, hasn't it? Yeah. It's been great. We love it. And we also, uh, this is this will be news to Steve and Vicki, we're going to launch a new season of The Uncommon Truth starting in January. We're going to take a couple weeks break here over the holidays. Everybody's super busy. And we're going to launch fresh on the 4th of January, I believe, is the, the first Monday in January. Are you getting so. two different speakers? No, you guys, so are you still, fi- you guys oh, will still be there. Your next there. season is not is still us, huh? St- you guys are still the next season. We're just going <laughs> to start off the with island. some, some yeah. new material. That's and, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, despite Christmas time, we're, we're all in black. festive black. So black if you're, says all black. You can, watch, you can watch us on YouTube, like most of the time. And uh, we'll see. Steve's wearing the shirt he wore when they went to see the bison in Yellowstone. In Yellowstone. And uh, 
Yeah. But today, so we're we're all wearing black shirts, but I want to talk about Jesus and and hope and the light <laughs> of the world. <laughs> so I guess segue. I should have sent out a, a text message. Um, so we're we're pretty familiar with with the Christmas season as Christians, but um, I think sometimes maybe we get too familiar. We 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 know it's about Jesus, but we get just like everybody else. We get wrapped up in like the busyness and all the things we, we're going to do and. Um, it's pretty cool that when we're at our property yeah. talking about, we've got a video that plays Charlie Brown tells Love everybody the, Love don't it. you know what the real meaning of Christmas is? And, Stops but I, I think we do as Christians, we kind of have a hard time, even as Christians remembering that. Right. Yeah. And so, um, we're talking about what Jesus first coming means to us today. And, um, and I wanted to, wanted to ask the question, what about Jesus, like, what about his coming makes it unique, or what's unique about Jesus' coming? Because we often talk about how to follow Jesus, um, but we, we don't often visit why we follow Jesus. We kind of take that for granted. So probably the most important scripture to describe that to me is John 1.1, 1, 1, with the Word became flesh. The, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it goes on to describe that the whole world was made through him and nothing was made that he did not make Mm -hmm. and nothing he did not make exists. And then it says, and he became flesh and dwelt among us, followed by, and we beheld his glory. Mm -hmm. All of those things are so important that God chose to become man, dwell among us, demonstrate the grace and truth that he wants and intended. When he sat when he visited with Adam and Eve I'm sure that those that he discussed what his intention for them living on the earth was but they chose to eat from this fruit and man falls and the only way it would through all these attempts to create a nation and to create a people and to create commandments and to create a law you know and they just continually stumbled over themselves and then Jesus comes to give us all a second chance at the Garden of Eden, really, uh, Mm. where we walk with God, talk with God, we laugh with Him and cry with Him, and we are filled with the Holy Spirit and literally become His home. He dwells in us. And Jesus' coming made that possible. And the second best description I know of is that there were shepherds out in their field tending their flocks, and the glory of the Lord shined around them in Luke. And, and, And the angel said, Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, for today is born to you a Savior, and he is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you that you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, and he is Christ the Lord. And, and, and it's just, this is so important, and yet it has become so cliche or so just a byproduct. We just say these words, mm. but they give me goosebumps still. Both both things, the story of the word become flesh and dwelt among us, the purpose, like Isaiah, to us a son is given, to us a child is born, and the government will be upon his shoulder. He'll be the almighty God, the everlasting father, the Emmanuel. It was <laughs> prophesied in advance that I will come and I will live amongst you. Telling Adam and Eve didn't work. I will live amongst you and I will suffer everything you suffer, walk where you walk, Live how you live, mm. and I will live it the way I intended for you to live it. And this will be a sign to you, an example to you, that if you imitate me and do what I do, you will know the Father, and there's no way to the Father lest you come through me. This act of, of heaven on earth for your benefit, mankind, is God's blessing to you to teach you how to be Come to the Father. Come to your Creator. Be forgiven. Be blessed. Be filled. Walk with Him and talk with Him and live with Him. And that all happens because on this Christmas morning that we celebrate, not necessarily the day of, but simply just the memory of the fact that He was born, and this will be a sign to you that you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Yeah. And, the, and He will be the Emmanuel. The government will be upon his shoulders. He is the everlasting father, the almighty God. Hmm. And he will live amongst you and you will behold his glory. Glory as of the only begotten son of God came forth from God. 
is with God. And as he is with God, we can be with God. And that's why the coming of Jesus Christ is so important. That's why the birth of Jesus is so incredible. Leading right up to the death of Jesus, which is the most phenomenal thing that we ignore on a daily basis. It is the most incredible thing. A sunset always gets my gaze, always stops me in my steps, always takes my breath away. A beautiful sunset, right? Mm -hmm. The sky and the beauty of it. And Jesus is a hundred times more beautiful when we cast our eyes upon him. The problem is it isn't visual. It's something we have to almost see in our mind, in our heart. We have to let the Holy Spirit reveal it to us. We have to see it in a spiritual image, Jesus coming for us, Jesus walking with us, Jesus surrounding us with his love. We have to see it in a different way, but it's hundreds of times more beautiful than a gorgeous sunset. And beautiful in a way that is hard to describe with human words. And yet that angel said it so well. Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy. That's why it's so important that Jesus came. Because it's tidings of great joy. And this is the part I left out. For all people. Hmm. Not just us three or us five sitting around here. But for all people. Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy for all people. Hmm. And this will be a sign to you of the fact that today is born to you a Savior, a Savior, and he is Christ the Lord. Oh, my gosh. Jesus coming. Jesus coming for me. Jesus coming for you. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah, I was I was thinking as you were talking like Jesus is very like th- that that what you're saying about God coming down becoming flesh and dwelling among us that's really unique, right? In history. Um, I'm about as unique as anything that's ever happened on earth, yes. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, that's yes. an understatement because right. it's like, yeah. well, God came down and right. and uh, people say that, well, short of God coming down right now and telling me, uh, <laughs> they do but, say it, that. but it's actually like when you think about it compared to the other things we put our hope in uh, and the other world systems that people put their hope in, it's a, it's a complete different paradigm, right? Because, um, it seems like a lot of the stuff we put our hope in is, is either ourselves or in other, other people or other things, um, or working our way to a God or a different God or something. And he says you'll hope again. And this, yeah, if you, if you hope in those things, you're, you're going to have to hope in something else later on. Yeah. But this is, this is actually God coming down, realizing he can't, he, we can't do it on our own and and we're going to need his help. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just, uh, you know, I'm just, I I suppose looked at me for something to say when after Steve just talked and, (laughs) and I really was just kind of in my own little glory bubble right now because when you read those words and you just kind of come back to the truth of the little baby that was born, who was a savior to all the angels in the field <clears throat> with the shepherds and coming for all, it just was, I, I was feeling the incredible weight of that, the incredible power of the Holy Spirit that he came for me. And without him, I'm just going, I'm not going to make it to mm-hmm. heaven. Uh, this, this week again, we had a good friend pass on and, the thought of him in the presence of Jesus because he loved the Lord is just, it's what we strive for. You know, Jesus came to get us and then hopefully we receive that and we follow him back to paradise and heaven and stuff. Mm-hmm. And just that, those, that scripture in, in Luke is just it's, just, it's just shocking if you just let it really absorb into your, into your identity, into your soul. It's, it's pretty, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, so I, I I see that story when whenever I hear about it, I think of just how different it is, right? Yeah. And um, I I did a little bit of of studying into different world religions, mm-hmm. not really super serious, but I kind of want to know. I felt like it was my duty to know what what other people believe and and around the world, just different religions, and it all seemed to be all right. How how are we going to obey a system to get ourselves good enough to be with? this god or or achieve this sort of paradise or whatever it is um and then when when you were talking about jesus coming down to be with us emmanuel 
the light of the world, you know, lighting up in, in the darkness. Um, it just seems completely, completely different. And uh, I did a little bit of research on Advent because I I'd never been like a liturgical sort of person. I didn't I didn't know, but there's a whole liturgical year where it's like uh, remembering these things, right? And and Advent is not not only about I found this out when I was researching. Advent's not only about Jesus coming the first time as a baby, being born, um, but it's also about looking ahead to the next time he comes, right? Wow. And uh, I didn't know that, and but there's m- remarkable parallels because in the beginning, that at that time Israel hadn't heard from God in 400 years, right? And they were just waiting for the Messiah, and it was complete darkness and silence. And I think we we feel a little bit of that uh, today too, right? Like, yeah. man, the world's getting pretty dark. Yeah. And in Christmas time, really good. This light, we we need this light, right? We need so this much. light. So yes. You know, in what I, way is Jesus that light? Well, I know that when I met him, I thought I had it together, and I thought, but I was stumbling around in the dark. And sometimes you don't even know you're in the dark, and other times you do. So I was not actually actually seeking him when I fa- when he found me uh, forty almost forty two years ago. And it's like once you live in the light of Jesus Christ, for me, nothing ever comes close and all those other religions that I tried before I met Jesus they're just they all died they just the end of the story they died they're in they're in a tomb Jesus is the only God that rose again mm. you know and was seen by so many but the light of the world you know that comes into my life at Christmas especially it's um it's so necessary because you just fumble around in the dark without him and you see that, you know, if you hope in anything other than thing, anything other than Jesus, you're going to hope again. And it doesn't matter what you put your hope in and faith in. If you don't put in the light of the world, you're fumbling around in the dark, hmm. and it's all on you, trying to figure this world out. And the truth, you will know the truth, and the truth sh- set you free. And when I met him, uh, you know, in 1979, that's what I got, is that I knew the truth of my life. I knew what my mission in life was. I didn't know where he was taking me, what he was going to do. I just knew I was completed at that moment, that my God-shaped hole was filled, and I didn't know I had a God-shaped hole. Mm. And it's um, his, the light, his light is so true to me. I just am so grateful. I'm so grateful for the truth of Jesus Christ, that he was born in a baby, as a baby, and uh, he's, he's made my life remarkable. And the verse I quoted from John 1.1, 1, 1, what I left out was when John said, Jesus is the light yeah. that mm. shines in the darkness. Yeah. And that light is know. the light of men. And it's like, it's what, so Jesus is the light. And if you have the light, John the Baptist was not the light, he said, but he came to testify of, of the, the light. light. Mm-hmm. And then what's amazing is that you and I get to be the light. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. And that's if you have the light that shines in the darkness in you. So we talk about Jesus came the first time, and then we talk about Jesus is coming back. But we miss the coming that is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is he is the the day of Pentecost is Jesus coming back again in in, in the spiritual form. So he came in physical form, then he came in spiritual form. Now he's going to come back as king, and he's going to rule the heavens and the earth. And uh, so that light that shines in the darkness, if you're ever lost in a dark place, and I mean, there are some places where there is a darkness that you can't, you're blind. It it is complete disorientation, and it's strange. Hmm. It's strange. feels like death, doesn't it? Yeah, something as little as an LED in a thermostat or an LED in a light switch honestly gives you comfort and gives you location. Yeah. Well, that, that light over there is right by the door, so now I know where the door is. If I head towards the light, veer to the right a little bit, I can get out of here. Mm-hmm. You know your way out. But if you don't see any light, if there is absence of even the blue light, that this glow in the dark, that like tunnel rats and other kinds of people who spend life in darkness, they, they tell you of this light that is that exist within the darkness. Mm-hmm. Well, there is a darkness that feels like to me that some on a moonless night, that's pretty dark. And I, I don't even know which way to go. I don't know where my bed is. I don't know where anything is. And, uh, in our new house, we have LEDs in every switch. So you find that you can find things it's like a runway. Yeah. It's <laughs> amazing. Landing These little green. tiny, tiny lights 
But let's just say, let's go to the light switch. You turn it on, and all of a sudden, the whole world changes. Hmm. I have had the opportunity to be in the darkness in my own house a couple of times, and it's shocking to me how absolutely disorienting that is. And that's exactly on a spiritual it's condition good. and spiritual level. That exactly what the world is feeling in this darkness without Jesus. They are without light. And they don't good. always know it, right? Yeah. Right. And Christians are not always voting to be the light. They're not always choosing to put their light on. They're usually hiding it under something. They're hot, trying not to expose it. Hmm. They're trying to agree with the world and still have a light. And it doesn't work that way. Only Jesus is the light, and the only light you can shine is Jesus. And because you have the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, now you're the light because I live in you, and you shine like a, like a lamp. So this importance of Jesus coming as a light to the world is darkness has no effect in the light. All around us right now, there are dark places, up under the table, behind us, in corners, under those uh, tablecloths, it's dark under there. has no effect hmm. because we're in the light. Yeah. But remove all light, and the darkness is foreboding and overwhelming. Scary. So it, I just, it's so important that Christians remember we're not, we are the light. We are the light that shines in the darkness. We have him living in us. We are supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit and demonstrate a light to the world. It's what I'm praying for with Lights of Hope, that we are the world is coming to our Lights of Hope, hundreds of night. Mm -hmm. Are we praying for more light? Are we praying for, the are we light. letting the Christmas lights show them, or are we trying to be the lights for them? Are we trying to demonstrate to them our love for Jesus looks like something, and his love for them looks like something? And I think that's where the importance of doing things, of, of making spectacles of light, making spectacles of truth and goodness and righteousness and, mm. you know, justice and just all of the kindnesses that go with Christianity, all of the generosities that are supposed to come along, you know, with us, that are supposed to be evident with us. I think that's what it's all about is Jesus came and the glory of the Lord shined all about us. And the heavenly host said, Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, goodwill towards men, peace on earth, mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. And is that what we're shining in our lights? Is that what's glowing through our eyes, our, our life, is the love of God that, that he, he wants to know them and he wants to bring peace and he wants to give them something? And is that what our light is shining? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And and that's so important to remember every year. And I love Christmas and, New and Easter because it shines the light on Jesus. <clears throat> they are still holidays when named correctly Easter and Christmas that are uh, specifically about the life and times and death and resurrection of Jesus. Yeah. And uh, that's just so important. Um, anyway, go ahead. No, that, that's such a great, that's so good. I mean, just the light, the light analogy of Jesus and, you know, be it, be in the light, be, you know, it, well, that's not exactly, I was thinking being in the in world, the but not of the world. But um, uh, it's such a magical, sweet time because the world's still celebrating Christmas and the Christ, they're trying to take the name of Christ out of it, but it's still there. Mm -hmm. And um, we have, Christians have a remarkable, uh just responsibility or, or effort right now, remarkable opportunity, I guess is yeah. the word. To, even in lockdown, crazy, crazy COVID 2020, to just be the light of the world. Mm -hmm. Because people are so quick scared right now. They don't have anything to hope in. And we're seeing that at the lights is that they just, they really do want to hope in something. So why not in the Jesus that we love? Why not the, the light in us? That um, And I like when Steve said that. It's like, we are the light of the world. Yeah. And without us, if I think in Thessalonians it talks about the end times that they, when he takes all the light out, it'll be really dark. Mm -hmm. There will be no Holy Spirit. If he takes the Holy Spirit out, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty. It's, it's sk tragic. It's gonna right now it seems a little tragic, but can you imagine if every Christian was gone yeah. and all the lights were gone? Yeah, that'd be pretty pretty freaky. Yeah. Well, yeah, we we so we had this slide that Steve built, and and I'm trying to learn the first night we're trying to run it and we had we just had two strings of christmas lights one going up and one coming down 
and we're in a dark corner of this property. All the the light shows somewhere else. else, and and the uh, fire pits are somewhere else. And uh, someone says we need to get a video of this so we can show people what it's like. And so we try to take a video, dark. and it's just like yeah. <laughs> screams in the dark. I'm like, I don't think we can publish this, right? It just sounds like <laughs> that's not encouraging. It just sounds like somebody's uh, you know running for their Art. lives. Yeah. And you hear the slide going down this uh, <laughs> this fake ice thing. <laughs> It is screaming, loud, right? Isn't it? Yeah. Sounds like and ice. Um, then we add the next night. Steve puts up some solar solar parking lights along the thing, and it, and and even more people are drawn to it because That's now they light. can actually see what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Right. And and now something that's exhilarating is actually you're able to share that with everybody else because you can actually see what you're doing, right? Light's so attractive, isn't it? Yeah. Light is so attractive. And I, w- when you're talking the first time about, you know, lights go out and you have no you have no way of, like, orienting yourself. Oh, I remember, so I'm an 80s movie buff, and I remember Top Gun when his instruments go out and they're like, how'd he make it back? And he's telling the story about how he... He turned off. He just turned off his instruments and all the lights because he couldn't see anything. And he looked down the ocean it was just pitch black, but he saw this green trail of the the phosphorescent uh, plankton that was stirred up, wow. and it guided him back to his aircraft carrier, and he made a landing there. And uh, is that Top Gun? Is that the right Top, one? I, that's Tom Cruise. I think it's Top Gun, right? And they're coming I don't remember out. That. I don't remember that description in you Top don't? Gun. I just don't remember it. Though. You've seen like seventeen times, haven't you? Oh, at least seventeen times. Okay, well, somebody write in and tell our fact checker left. So um, somebody let us know if that's actually. I think it's Top Gun. Well, but... it probably is. We're just old and we can't remember. Yeah. anymore. <laughs> and not We're the young. not the new Top Gun that's coming out next There's year. There's a new one. There's a new one. Oh it's still got Tom Cruise in it. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Boy, he's awesome. still he's still a captain. He's a little bit older. He's he's probably still a lieutenant. <laughs> yeah, he didn't yeah. he didn't he get, get promoted because he keeps flying. <laughs> I, I keeps read flying up on by it. the towers. And yeah, exactly. He mad. did get promoted and then he did that and he got demoted. Lost so. his stripes. Yeah. It's hysterical. So we're not we're not talking about Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise talking about Jesus. We're talking about Jesus, right? That's right. Um, so people out there, I mean, we've, we're being told, you know, you got to stick to yourself. You can't, you don't go and spread this virus. Don't kind of mix around. I know I'm, I'm planning to go and do a short, uh, like a small little visit to my family, my yeah. just immediate family in Colorado. And, uh, and most of my family's not going to get together because they're, they're, they're afraid, afraid. They're right? Afraid. So how do we as Christians, how do we do that when we, you know, we can't just throw together a light festival in our backyard. Maybe maybe some of us can, but what else can we do to spread that light to people around us in this really tough time? I think it's a balance of showing care for their feelings. I understand your, how you feel, and I'm, I respect that. Not, oh, what's wrong with you? Why are you afraid? What's, mm-hmm. you know, COVID crazy. you need a relationship COVID with crazy. God. You know, the, yeah. the kind of things most Christians tend to say. <laughs> you need to learn how to have faith. And the, and the truth is we need to just not live in fear Mercy, yeah. and, and then live in love and care. And, you know, it's really hard right now. And I think the best communication is let's with amongst ourselves is let's just trust Jesus. Hmm. Let's just believe in and trust Jesus. It's good. And then when we deal with people outside of our sphere, like family members you're going to see, then it's just really, I, I understand, I care. What, is there any way we can, like, can we, you know, get together in a park and sit on far sides of the table? Yeah. <laughs> not hug, not hold, but just, you know, mm-hmm. gather in the same place. Is there any, you know, any compromises we can make? And if they can't, they can't, you know. They can't. It's, a, it's an unfortunate byproduct of our time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Vicky, what about just normal people that we're interacting with? Like we see tons of people every day because we're all so busy over Christmas right. time. What can we do to show show our light to them? Um, well, I think, like she said, this time, this COVID crazy time, is just showing mercy and love and looking them in the eyes. People are so behind their mask, and and it's almost like a curtain that they can hide behind. And um, I just am overly friendly but I just say you know hey could I hug you or not hug you or <clears throat> you know um I think just humanity just being really interested in people's lives um and not being cavalier I, I know like some Christians are like like Steve said they're oh my gosh you, you don't have faith to believe and then other Christians are so scared and I think there's a middle road you know I think if you're 
compromise, you need to be concerned. You know, if you've, you've been battling leukemia, cancer, you need to be concerned. And then other people, you know, shouldn't we just trust Jesus? I think just going above and beyond for people, making the phone calls if they're, they're you know, in their house, is there anything I could do for you? For people who are not scared, you know, people can get people who feel like they can get out and around. Um, I just think be Jesus to people, and that seems kind of like a platitude, but it's like, well, what, really, really, what would he do right now? He came, he came right now, so it's interesting. So giving your life away, I think, is really important. Um, but people are, like I said, people are so scared. You know, praying for, honestly, not right now, saying, can I pray for you? And not in a platitude kind of way again, but it's really, can I pray for you? Yeah, like I right can do now. For you? Right yeah. now, can I pray for you right now? You know, and just, because we are the light of the world, we have the Holy Spirit. And I often, all the time, every time when I pray for someone, they just feel they just feel something, mm-hmm. and um, I'm not scared at all about COVID. Um, but I very compassionate towards people who are very scared. So I think just be in the light of the world right now. Actually, come in full circle, and that means just being on, being plugged into Jesus. Mm. You can't be a light without being plugged in. Yeah, that was so good. I just thought that was amazing. Didn't yeah. you think that was that good? was good? You can't was. be you can't be a light without being plugged in. I was really mesmerized. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. You were, yeah, you were. <laughs> I'm going to steal that. You can't be a light without being plugged That's in. That's it, a t-shirt. And, and this is the time of year that it's probably the easiest to say, well, I can't, I can't spend my, my coffee with you, Jesus, in the morning because I got this thing to mail off or yeah. I've got to send my Christmas cards out or i got to go shopping for this person. Yeah. Or, right. And really, if we're going to be the light of the world, we've got to be plugged into the light of the world. Yeah, and the thing is, for us, it's, it's so wonderful. It, you know, I wish every person who's listening could be at the lights of hope and you know with masks on without you know people you know we're, we're pushing masks because we, we you know because we just don't want to be shut we down offend anyone. we don't yeah. want to hurt anybody because they're scared but with masks without masks whatever um to see the amount of joy down there that people are so excited to be outside because outside's still legal mm-hmm. and then charlie we every what half an hour charlie brown peanuts comes on uh what lightness comes on and talks about luke and he says i know i know the reason for christmas and he, he if you're familiar with uh christmas peanuts christmas special which steve and i grew up with every year yeah it's just it just like take it just jars you mm-hmm. and it brings you every time he play it plays for me i stop on the on the green and just watch it and just remembering it's jesus and it's, and we just get so scared for it. it's just things that are not relevant yeah we should just be not scared and it's, it's just plug into jesus and what are, what are Lord. people saying to you because you do a lot of greeting there when people yeah. walk up right what are yeah. they saying when they're like wow what's this all about why do you guys do this they're just you know most of them have tears in their eyes they're just they can't believe it and <clears throat> some have some have struggled with you know organized religion or whatever <clears throat> and I say I struggle with that too I don't really like organized religion I love to just read the words of Jesus and do do them and they're I tell them the reason we do it is Jesus is the light of the world and we're celebrating his birth and his hope and then and then I can lead on into the into we're having a candlelight service on the 23rd about Jesus being the light of the world, mm-hmm. and um, they are so receptive. We we I think we've had almost 5,000 people come through in a week, yeah. uh, eight days, nine days, and only one person did not take the uh, flyer that's invited them to the candlelight service. And that's it, a I pretty mean, good percentage out of 5,000 people. <laughs> yeah, so it's like they're so receptive right now. Um, this is gonna. I think I talked about this months ago. This is going to be called the Corona Revival. Hmm. Many people will be saved because of coronavirus, yeah. because all things work together for good. Yeah. This goofy thing or this really scary thing or whatever it is, however, wherever you are in the spectrum, it's going to lead people to Jesus. And that's what we need to do. Yeah. We need to be the light of the world. We yeah. need to open our mouth and tell them that the reason for the season is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And to use the name Jesus. Yeah. That's right. Use the name of Jesus. That's right. And and that's pretty conditional on how how we are as lights in this time, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It has to be, you know, like we've talked about it before. It's like put your money where your mouth is and don't live on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday any different than you would be on Sunday. Yeah. Be the same person. And I think that we see that a lot. At the Father's house, people trying to be really authentic and genuine, mm-hmm. read the words of Jesus and just do them. Shouldn't we just Shouldn't we just read the words and just do them? Yeah. And you know what's cool? I've got a few friends that that have started 
kind of they start around the fringes of church because like you said they're they're like mm, not, i'm not yeah. so sure about organized religion yeah. or i i maybe i'd like to but i just haven't found my place yet and um, maybe feel like they don't fit in and as we instead of just why don't you come to church on sunday it's also well, why don't you come to help me volunteer run this slide? That's right. Can you make some popcorn with me? Yeah. Can you make sure the three-year-olds don't kick the Christmas lights and, yeah. and knock them all out? Can yeah. you can you uh, help run the bouncy castles or greet people, um, pass out flyers for our service? And that's that brings all these you know people that maybe didn't have a light to shine before, didn't yeah. feel like they could shine their light or equipped to shine their light. I've, I'm seeing those people kind of like pass their torch, get get their candle lit from somebody else and start jumping in and being really passionate about it too. And so I'm, I'm thinking of my friend Rob, who, uh, yeah, it's awesome, who's been it? out there pretty yeah. much every night he can. A He's guy a path named, police. Yeah, he, he keeps the lights on. <laughs> yeah, He keeps those three-year-olds at bed. Yeah, well, they, he said they like to play jump rope with the, the, <laughs> yeah. the lights LED that lights. keep you on the path, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And uh, we also have a, a guy named uh, Stephen who's been helping out every night. Stephen. Every, yes. every almost night. Almost every night. Most yeah. nights at the slide, yeah. Yep. And he's the kid who, because our our slide is super fast, he's the one who catches the kids who get sideways before they tumble and off their slides. And old ladies like me, he would actually have caught me. Yeah, if he had been there. I'm not bitter at all. We not didn't, bitter, we huh? didn't stop mad at whoever else was there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's a cool thing is that at the Father's house, we don't we don't necessarily have to invite him to church. Because, you know, the old, the old uh, cliche about coming to church, it's very difficult. And I can understand walking into a church is a difficult thing. But going to a light walk, you know, and just being part of the city, the city thing, and saying, oh, that's a Father's house? You know, and the the best thing I've heard is that, you know, um, you guys do good things for the city. It's like, that's such a cool thing to hear, Mm. the Father's House. And what we decided to do is make it totally free. Yes. There is, there's free parking and free, and the free, the free walk um, is, it's kind of nice. You don't, we're not charging for that. I mean, they can do the slide for money and and buy you hot chocolate. But I really like that aspect. Just come. You don't spend a dollar. Yeah. Just come and be under the beautiful lights of Jesus. Of yeah. Max, of Steve, of Amen. Vicky. Yep. That was really good. Did you close your eyes and fall asleep? No, I didn't fall asleep. It, 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 so if you're watching on video, Steve, I, I just, just slapped him. with my eyes closed. Yeah, he was snoring. I was not snoring. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I'm, I'm... We've actually been in the lights every night for 10 days. We have, every yeah. single night. And yeah. I, I don't Steve's favorite uh, observation post is he's got his chair at the yeah. bottom the of the, the slide, slide. Yep. and he just watches the kids come down. And, and I and dare anyone to make it to my chair. Yeah. It's quality control. There was a guy after you left last night who was... Uh, who would have Yeah. He get his his little kid. Come on, Johnny. Let's go again. We can hit that wow. hit that uh, Knock the that edge guy of the off grass the edge. there. So um, it's pretty cool. I I really appreciate that. There's something that we decided this on the first the of November. First of November. Yeah. So uh, six weeks in, <laughs> uh, five weeks it took us. It's massive. And uh, and now it's up and running. You would never have known. No. Um, but I just I just like how and it starts with you guys you guys said the city needs something yep we've got something yep which includes time money people energy and we're gonna go give this thing and uh and i like that because i've i've i think i've always been like that like i've i want to go do something but i don't know where to start yeah it's big and it's cool i i don't know if i could pull off something like that yet but i can pull off my part which is I can push a kid down the slide and make sure he stays alive at the bottom. You do good. Right? And yeah. uh, comes back for more over point. and that's over good, and over that's again. That's a big point right That's there. a big point, Keep him alive at the bottom? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because they uh, they get going so fast and then they end up right at Steve's feet. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's the other way we're the light of the world. We're ushering him into the kingdom <laughs> at the bottom of the slide. <laughs> so. If you haven't seen it, you can go on um, our Facebook page and, and yep. watch the slide we're talking about. It's, it's, it is epic. Yeah. It's you, you said it was almost like building a house, wasn't it? Oh, wow. I was, yeah. I, <laughs> so I, I emptied my piggy bank of energy. 20, 20 feet high at the top, right? And yeah, that's... the 20, 21 actually to the top of the rail, if that's what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. We're standing at 18 feet off the ground. Or wow. Seven, yeah, just close. And uh, But your point was that you even if you can't do this big that's event, right. you can do something. You can yeah. be part of it and, ma- and be a really important major part mm-hmm. of something fabulous and wonderful. And uh, I think everybody should be part of something really awesome in their life I too. and we we have epic. provided a place where hundreds and hundreds of people can do something really epic in their life really gorgeous really awesome mm-hmm. and you can see it everyone walks in going 
Wow. This, so many people said, wow, this is an Oroville. Yeah, they love yeah. it. I go, it's changed, hasn't it? You know, the yeah. Oroville's really changed. This yeah. is really possible in Oroville now. The spiritual climate of the so city good. of Oroville is now taken over by the Holy Spirit. And whatever his people will do, our people will do. So we see these amazing things, like the mud run. Everybody walked around with the same spirit, going, this is amazing. It's like Disneyland. They, they said, what's this feeling? Yeah. And that's what I'm praying for every hour on the hour. Lord, we got the world coming to us. Let your spirit increase. Let your anointing increase. Let them feel you and know that in the Good. darkness that's coming, the darkness that's like that pitch dark I talked about yeah, earlier, evil. where even a LED light across the room is a, is, it saves your life. Let there be enough light that when the darkness comes and it's that yeah. kind of a foreboding darkness, that there will be a light that they can come to, that they will remember, I saw a light in a field that's right. over on Oral Banger Highway. What, what was that church's name? Yeah. The Father's house. I'm going to go find some light because it's dark here. Yeah. And they'll remember that there are good people who love and serve and give and expend their energy on on us, on our our well being, our mental ill, our mental wellness, our mental uh, capacity, our our spiritual and emotional well being, mm-hmm. and and they'll remember us as the light that shined in the darkness. And we will tell them we are not the light. But we came to testify about the light, and he is the light of the world, mm. and he is the Savior, and he is Christ the Lord, and his name is Jesus, and he loves you. He has a plan for your life. And if you would pray with me, you could know that. You could meet him. You could have that experience right. that says he's real. You could have that experience that says he's real, but you can also find out that he has not rejected you. Mm. If you would pray with us, you would find out that he has not rejected you and his mercy and grace and his everlasting love is for you. Mm. Seek him and you'll find him. Knock and the door will be open to you. Ask and you'll receive. He's knocking at the door of your heart. Just open the door, let him in and have fellowship with him. And then you will know that he's real. And if he's real, shouldn't we just follow him? All he wants us to do is love one another as we have been loved which is a holy thing. And so we need to love each other with a holiness, love each other with a righteousness. And if you would pray and ask him into your heart and have that experience with him, don't, don't, don't try to get him to come fix your life, get him to take your broken life and use it in his kingdom. What can I do for you? Mm -hmm. How can I serve you, Jesus? And just let him touch you. Do it. Hmm. That's great. Yeah. And I just think, um, Wherever you are around the world, you know, be the light this, this holiday season and January and February and March all the way through 2021, the rest of your life, be a light of the world. The world is, there's an impending darkness, I think, that we all feel. I know in America we do. Um, and, but Jesus, 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 he's the answer to all of our, our questions. And if you would just bow your head right now where you're at, mm. close your eyes. You'll be hearing this another day than we're recording it. Jesus. But the Holy Spirit Spirit. is all present in all time. Just bow your heads, close your eyes, and ask him, Lord, say Jesus. Jesus. And say it loud enough for your ears to hear it. Not, you know, just speak it out just loud enough to hear. Jesus, Jesus, I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. I give my life to you, and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me. And fill me with your presence. Be my Lord and lead me and teach me and I will follow you. Mm -hmm. I give my life to you and ask you to use me as you will. Amen. Amen. Now as you open your eyes and if you feel this thing, would you write in the comments about what you did and how you experienced, what you experienced when you prayed that prayer with me. The anointing of God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to those who are lost and in darkness. And today we're here to tell you that we bring you tidings of great joy. Mm -hmm. For today, in your town, in your life, has been born to you a Savior, and he is Christ the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he has come to bring you goodwill, peace on earth, to to have you used in his kingdom for good. Today is born to you, Jesus, as your Savior. Let him in. 
He did not reject you. Open your Bible today and start reading the Gospel of John. Read about Jesus and his life and times. And write us here at the, here at the Uncommon Truth and tell us what happened. If you're listening on the radio, when, you, when you're done, when you've, when you've done this prayer and you've experienced his love for you, go ahead and write in the comments what God has done for you and what mm. you've done. Let us know. If you want to give us contact information, let us, let us have that too, and we'll, we'll write you. If you just want to give us your name, we'll pray for you. Anyway, thank you for giving me this time, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm so grateful for the fact that you've come into the family of God, and you have brothers and sisters all around the world ready to be your, in fellowship with you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. If you want that email, it's uh, uncommon truth podcast at gmail.com. Um, you can also reach out to us. You can find us on, on uh, fathershouseoroville.com or changeoroville.org. That's where all our stuff is at. And uh, we're coming to you live from the School of Transformation and that website. If you're interested in that new semester starting in March, yeah. that's uh, transformationschool.org. So lots of ways to get connected, but we'd love to hear if you joined us in that prayer. We'd love to hear from yes, you. Yes, please. Um, it, we'll, we'll shout you out on the, the next broadcast. That's right. You if you're from suffering me. from addiction, we have a residential discipleship program that is all about be, being a Christian. Um, you can always contact us about your need for help from alcohol, from even just sexual addictions, uh, drug addiction, um, just a broken life. We have, we have a one called Life Recovery Ministry that has really uh, reached and saved a lot, of, a lot of adult men and women. That's right. And that website is liferecoveryministries.com. Liferecoveryministries.com. If you're listening on radio, oh, someone's calling us right now. Right now. Oh, my goodness. If you're listening on radio, that, um, that we've got a sponsor. We're actually sponsored by Life Recovery Ministries. They're gonna, you're going to hear that. And if you're on podcast, just go ahead and... I've got the link in the description below, so you can reach us there. And uh, that's it. It's, it's Christmas time. We're going to take a break for a couple weeks, okay. and we'll be back January ready 4th. to go January 4th, 2021. Merry Christmas. God be the Merry light of the Christmas. world. Merry Christmas, guys.